Good evening. Thanks for coming. If you do have a mobile phone, if you'd like to put it on silent, please, thank you. Right, a massive welcome to Janet Sargent with an ayahuasca journey and beyond. Janet will take us through the ayahuasca journey of altered states where, under the guidance of an experienced shaman, certain plant combinations are ingested. She will cover the preparations, the ceremony itself, and what may possibly await the participants when the spirit or soul enters other realms. Please welcome Janet Sargent. I'm going to talk about ayahuasca, but before we get to that part, I'm going to build you up to it. Um, it's a Native American plant medicine that's been used for thousands of years, and it's a really good way to get to know yourself. She, it's, it's a female plant, and she shows you yourself and literally flips you inside out on a journey. It's amazing. But <clears throat> before you get to that part, your life will start altering slightly. The ayahuasca plant will call you to take it, but your life will considerably change building up to it. And you'll start noticing synchronizations in your life. I was witnessing lots of mystical experiences, which I can show you on the PowerPoint. And it started to make sense to me on Mother's Day 2012, when some really strange thing happened to me. And after that had happened, I decided that I was just going to witness and observe my life and watch more things showing up, knowing that I'm on the right path and synchronising with my life. So what happened on Mother's Day 2012, I became very upset, very angry for some unbeknown reason. <clears throat> I started crying. I was in a rage. This went on for about two hours. Very, very, just sobbing and sobbing. I was like, what, what is it, what is it? I went upstairs and I fell to my knees at the side of the bed and I just said, fill me up, just, just fill me up now, just fill me up. And I was speaking to the Holy Spirit. I'm not a Christian, I'm not religious or anything like that, but for some reason I was calling on this Holy Spirit. And I sat there, my eyes closed, fill me up, fill me up now, and all of a sudden, it felt like something was pouring golden stuff into my head. And I could feel it. It was going all through my being. It was so peaceful. It was like getting a hug from God. So beautiful. And as this was happening, I, was, I started to cry again because I was so happy. It was like, you know, whilst this was happening, um, I was still in this state, I had my eyes closed the whole time and I was just experiencing this feeling, wow, wow, something has, has, has come to me, I've asked for it and it's come to me. And my ex-partner at the time walked into the bedroom and just said, are you okay? And I said, I opened my eyes and I was like, oh. and he's like, what is it? I went, oh, something's with us. And he said, where is it? I said, it's everywhere, it's mist, it's everywhere. And he picked up his phone and he took a picture. Now, that's the room with mist. And if you notice at the top there, I'll show you the next picture. That's the picture we took after. That on the ceiling there is an orb. Now, apparently at the time, he couldn't see the mist and I could see it and we sat in the same room. He took the picture and he said, oh my God, the picture's misty. And it, it did him because I was like, and it oh, dissipated. It went. And I was like, hallelujah, <laughs> what is going on? From that point on, I decided to start observing my life a little bit more and witnessing things happening. And lots of other very strange things started to happen. I'd also been following David Icke for about two years and I was resonating with his information, particularly about the Heart Centre and intentions, not so much about the conspiracy theories and what's going on in the world. I stuck to the uh, consciousness videos and it was really connecting with him. Anyway, a bit later on, I went to see David Icke at Wembley in 2012 October, which was a few months after that uh, experience had happened. And at the end, I said, I'm going to meet him. I'm going to meet him. And I declared it. 
and they also had dancers on the stage at the end. And I said, I need to dance on that stage. Look at all this energy, it's all being wasted. I could use this energy, I'm a healer. And we, just, we can draw Reiki symbols and combine and send the energy to the earth, especially more than one person, like tonight here. We can all do this because we've got combined energies. And if you're willing to share your energy, I can use it to send healing. <clears throat> so, not long after, um, on the 16th of December 2012, I had another strange encounter with Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel and Jesus. Where I was in the shower and I don't know how I got out of the shower. I got out of the shower and I found myself with my head forward on the bathroom wall and my hands up like this. And I could see a bulky cube in the solar system and the information which was being put inside my head. Droom, droom. What is this? It's like not a language, just information goes in, you understand it immediately. Whilst my head was on the wall, I saw these, a bit like that, not quite like that, but it was Archangel Michael giving me information, Archangel, and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'll go into this a little bit later with the pineal gland, it's very interesting. I'm like, I can't remember all this. Oh God, what's happening to me? Flipping it, I flew down the stairs again. Something's happening to me, oh my God, what's happening? It was still cut this information again picked his phone up um, and the phone went off and it was like, what's wrong with the phone? What's wrong? I said, never mind about the phone, what's happening to me? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I plugged the phone back in, uh, there was nothing wrong with the phone, the battery was fine and again, he said, oh my God, what's that on the picture? And we had, that's an orb. I've never seen one like that, so white. And I had a big one there as well, and there was one above my head there. I have got better pictures than this in my iPad, I've not got it with me today, but these are the ones I could get on just to show you. And I was like, wow, that arm followed me around all night and it took a few pictures and it was with me. And it was like, and this information was all night, I didn't sleep, I woke up, I was wired, I was like, what is happening to me? The next day we googled white orb and what it meant and it said high frequency protection ascended master archangel and I was like, oh my god. It really happened, and it's confirmation there. Not many people get pictures like that, and that's why I'm still here today, sharing the story. All these things are possible for all of us, if you ask, really ask and let it go. Um, and that's the reason the phone went off, because the frequency in the room was so high, it's at the phone. That's why the phone went off. Amazing. So after that, I thought I'd gone mad. Um, I ended up doing a hypnotherapy course for nine days in London, a very intense course that opened up the world of hypnosis. And that's how I know we're all manipulated in our world. Very clever. Um, mind control. It's all hypnotic trans patterns. And being a therapist, we can help people to undo the hypnotic patterns that are bad for them. Has that just gone off? <laughs> Yeah, and introduce new patterns and habits that will serve you and help you in your life, you know. Now, leading up to an ayahuasca journey, these two beautiful virtues go hand in hand. And it's really important that you can learn. I don't know if anybody in here has got unforgiveness or a lack of gratitude in your heart. They go hand in hand. So if you can find a little tiny thing that you're grateful for now, and I tell you what, it's, we take it for granted every second, every day of our lives. But one thing that you can be really grateful for right now, you can breathe in and breathe out. And you have life. The biggest gift of all. Now, if you can find anything else on top of that, that's a bonus. So when you've got your lovely children and your grandchildren or your horse or your fancy car or whatever it might be, ah. I'm so grateful. I've got something in the now that I'm grateful for. So that means all those bad things that have happened to me as well have brought me here right now. So I can be grateful for the bad things too. And that means I can forgive that person or that situation and just let it go because I am grateful now. And most of our issues come from our childhood. We've all got traumas from our parents. They all did it. They all did the best, even if they didn't know what they were doing or they appeared to be horrible. They've been abandoned, abused, neglected, whatever, whatever the situation is. I tell you now, you chose your parents to come here. You so chose your parents to come here so that you could have the experience 
and learn and learn to uh, buy better at higher level next time for your next experience either when you come back here or you go into another realm. So knowing that, if you've got people sometimes that are adopted for example, have got a, a real hard issue there because they're literally given up as soon as they're born, that is an absolutely fantastic opportunity to get self-love because that's what you've programmed yourself to do before you came here. That's the reason you chose those parents. If, do you all agree that you all have a soul? We all got a soul? Right. So I'm grateful for, once you've got forgiveness, you get so much more gratitude because you've let it go. And you're no longer a prisoner in your side your own self. To forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. And when, any grudges you might have about anybody else in the present moment and forgive every day, forgive them. If you can't, if it's really hurtful, light a candle. Just show the universe that you're willing to let it go and the universe will help you and serve you. And you'll be moving up to your heart centre vibration instead of your second chakra where you'll be held in your tribe and your physical reality and the treble six vibration. The earth's coming into like new phases now. Lots of beautiful things are beginning to happen. The consciousness is being raised and the humans need to get ready. You've got one opportunity in this lifetime to change yourself. One, this lifetime only. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to waste your life living it through the eyes of somebody else? Or are you going to step into your full self, do, do all this and see where it can take you? Because when you come up to your heart centre, anything's possible. And the love that you have, especially for other people and the world, oh, it's just... <laughs> you want to start doing things like this? If you'd have told me two years ago that I'd be studying here talking about all this, dancing and doing some weird things, that I'd be like, no, that's not me. But that's where it's brought me, so... Oh, I just like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> then we just smell high, we can have a big amount of gratitude, be grateful. Forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. So if there's any of you now who've got unforgiveness, or any of you got any issues in the now, behavioural patterns, drinking problems, I don't know, gambling, whatever, any patterns that you don't like about yourself, knowing this information and knowing that it can be healed, it's, it's all usually from your childhood, you can let it go thinking, I chose my parents to come here, oh my God. And your children chose you. And you couldn't have your children without your parents. So you might as well give all the grudges and grievances you've got with them if you've got your own beautiful children. And they chose you. It's fantastic. Hmm. OK, we'll move on now to the pineal gland. I just thought, your pineal gland is your direct antenna to God. Your pineal gland is situated in your brain. It's what's called your third eye chakra. Okay? On a certain diet, um, calcify it and make it. Yes. Work. That is the reason that a lot of that is happening in the world because the, the people in control of the world know about the pineal gland, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, it's, it's in all the ancient scriptures, and it's depicted as a pine cone, and I'll show you some pictures of that later. Um, so it's a water-based gland and it can calcify so that is why things are added to our food and chemtrails and various other things because for some reason they do not want us to know our own power and this little gland will give you direct con communication with the divine and you can decalcify your pineal gland by having superfoods or coconut oil uh, raw chocolate um, many things that you can do to decalcify your pineal gland and you can start it. If we all have our own relationship with the divine, or whatever you want to call it, we will all come up to our heart centre. This means we are light. Once you get light and you shine it on the darkness, the darkness is gone. And they vibrate at a very low frequency and they need darkness to survive. That is why they keep us in the dark and they're called the Illuminati because they've got all the ancient knowledge and they're using it against us. But we, the humans, are light beings and they also know this and if we all come up to our heart center they haven't got a chance they haven't got a chance and they don't want you to know about this gland but yet this was a massive one outside the vatican it's crazy 
Uh, yeah, so look at this one. It looks remarkably like the Eye of Horus. And I'll tell you something else, your pineal gland contains rods and cones, just like your eye. It is a singing instrument. It is amazing. You don't need to know this either. It is well, the eye of Horus, the eye to God, whatever you want to call it. Dimethyltryptamine. Everybody heard of that? DMT. Now this is what's included in the ayahuasca. Uh, it is the psychedelic hallucinogenic part uh, that gives you the visions, and the, the other part gives you the learnings and the teachings. Uh, your pineal gland produces DMT. You produce it every night when you sleep. Your brain floods with DMT when you're born, and you, your brain floods with DMT when you die. For what reason is that? Because of the, 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 when the ayahuasca opens up over dimensions and it looks a lot like that, everything disappears. It's like nothing. Journey. But inside that, there's instructions and information and conversations that you're having with yourself, dissecting yourself, it's breaking it all up. So you can reach, reach as high, as high as you can. Um, and it's produced when you dream at night. It's amazing. Um, when you tilt your head back on the pillow, You've got three little instruments in your ear, your stirrup, hammer and anvil. Now one of those little instruments uh, is placed at a certain angle, but when you tilt your head back, it's placed at a different angle. This then allows melatonin to be produced and will put you into a very relaxed state ready for sleep. Once you start sleeping, the DMT will be produced and then you will dream. So when you have a dream, and you've all had dreams, how can you see when your eyes are shut? Your pineal gland, your third eye third eye. So when I had my head on the bathroom wall, I was seeing Archangel Michael, Jesus, and Archangel Gabriel. They were, I could see them with my third eye. That's how amazing it is. So there we go. We've got the staff of Osiris with the pine cone, staff of Dionysus, staff of Bacchus, I don't want to pronounce that with the pine cone. The Pope has got a pine cone. Even the Pope knows. So I always think people like Christians, Catholics, and allowed to meditate because that's what activates your pineal gland in the waking state. So you can have this relationship with God, but they want you to look in the book. Keep looking in the book. Keep looking in the book. We put lies in it. Just keep believing the lies. Fear, fear, fear. I can't do that because I'll go to hell. I can't do that because I'll go to hell. I can't do that. Can't. Fear. God's not about fear. Nothing, nothing to fear at all. There's a great, that, that one there, that's outside the Vatican. It's like, does the Pope know? Of course he does. How is it the people who go there probably don't know what the pine cone represents? So ayahuasca works with your pineal gland so that you can have a direct relationship or communication with the divine. If you read it, I'm, sorry, I'm letting you know this information about building up to it, about the forgiveness and the gratitude. This all really helps if you're considering doing something like plant medicine like that. Um, if you just go to have sort of problem out or something, you might not get an intensified journey as such, or you might not even get a journey. But if you go clean and forgiving and grateful, she will work with you and she will show you who you really are. So it's a little bit like this. <laughs> Love this. So the TARDIS represents that you're bigger on uh, the, in the inside than you are on the outside. And this is what the pineal gland does. It's a water-based gland. And it has the ability, water particles have the ability to flip from particles into waves, which will give you a completely different perception. And when DMT is produced in the pineal gland, that is what's happening. So you literally like this, and then you go, and you flip it inside out. So your universe is now, and you're in the middle. It's amazing.